Okay, well, welcome to my 2020 fruitcake unboxing video. Um, I, I'll start by just saying this is ridiculous, and I'm not sure why I'm doing it, nor why you're listening to it and watching this video, uh, but it's happened. Here we are. We've got eight different fruitcakes. Um, I've only had one of these before, and so we're going to open them up, see what they're like, compare them side by side. I will say that uh, make sure you stick around to the end because... I did this over the course of a week and a half, and so some of my comments were in the moment, and then uh, the results at the very end actually had changed as I sat around and thought about which fruitcakes I craved, which ones I went back for another piece, um, which ones I desired more after I saw the ingredient lists, which I post after each of the, the tastings. So make sure you stick around to the very end. And if you're still moved, we are still accepting donations to offset the cost of this project. Um, it's a silly low project, but you know, 10 bucks, 15 bucks, if you enjoyed it, is appreciated and will be spent to pay for the fruitcakes I bought for this project. So enjoy. First is Gethsemane Farms. Very traditional. I call them monks and nuns fruit cakes, slick packaging, vacuum packed cake, Ugh. the monks want to make sure that no one steals the fruit cake. Doesn't smell too boozy. And here we go. This is dense. About 70% packed with fruit and nut. You got the green cherry, the red cherry. And here we go. It's good. As a sugar addict, I approve. It's very moist, just a little bit of booze, not my favorite texture because it's kind of pasty and gritty, but not bad. Uh, I could easily knock this whole fruit cake down in a night or two. Assumption Abbey, this is the one that all my Ozark friends said I had to try. Let's see how it looks. Looks a little more homemade than the polish of Gethsemane. And in fact, the wrapping is more delicate. Uh, not vacuum packed, just sealed. I don't know, I actually prefer that just because Feels like it's homemade versus factory made. It's sticky, but not as wet as Gethsemane. Oh, but it is still wet. Okay, here we go. I like how there's fruit and nuts on the top as decoration. Shows a little more care, I guess, artistry. The inside's about the same. Maybe a little less filling, uh, but still about 60-70% of nuts and fruits to batter. Okay, Assumption Abbey. Let's see how it tastes. Smells almost identical to Gethsemane. Ooh. Hmm. It's got red cherries. I haven't seen any green. Oh, there are some green cherries. I'll tell you, the flavor compared to Gethsemane, much better. Um, barely any booze, although my mouth is kind of resistant to booze after living in New Orleans. But what I'm really loving about this is the texture. Um, where Gethsemane was a little gritty, a little um, mushy. This is more solid. It's not gritty at all. It's a really nice texture. I mean, as far as fruitcakes go, as far as traditional monks and nuns fruitcakes goes, I really like the texture of this. I 
Our next fruitcake are from the Sisters of St. Benedict in Indiana. This one I randomly found on Amazon. Um, I was just scrolling for ones I hadn't heard of before and, and anyone who knows me knows that the smaller the operation the better for me. I just feel they're more artisanal. Um, so this is from Indiana. It's again monks and nuns. This one is not in a tin. Um, I don't think they even offered them in tins, but maybe. But this is a little baby loaf, so let's go ahead and open it up, see how it is. It's already pretty sticky. No wrapper at all um, on the outside, no paper wrapper. And so let's go ahead and cut it up. So this is where fruitcake lovers diverge. You can see it's more dough than filler. Um, I actually prefer this style more, but many people I know demand more fruits and nuts, and I don't know if that's for value or, or taste, but so be it. This one. Okay. I don't smell any alcohol at all. Looks really dry, cake-like on the inside, like quick bread cake. Um, green and red cherries, Lots of nuts, other fruits in there, and uh, we'll see. It's not feeling too good in my fingers right now. Yeah. There, this is for somebody. There are people who love this, like family tradition tells them to love it. Not wild about the flavor don't like the texture yeah someone will enjoy this a lot that's the one I made now I only made this uh, two weeks ago I think so it's not properly aged yet I have a second one that I'm laying aged till Christmas uh, this one is using the New York Times recipe titled a good fruit cake and it was not cheap to get the ingredients and uh, with each of the ingredients I really uh, I, I sought out the best of each thing so some artisanal candied cherries artisanal uh, citrus peel some of the stuff I made myself of course um, but I wanted to make it how you might make it at home if you were buying your own ingredients so I try not to do my own um, whistles and bells if at all possible. Because it's only a couple weeks old, um, it is wrapped in cheesecloth that's been doused in uh, rye whiskey. And um, I'm sure it hasn't soaked all the way through yet, uh, but we're gonna give it a try here because, well, it's what we're doing. So this is cheesecloth. Um, I did steal an idea off of, oh man, it's heavy off of one of my favorites last year, and that is to age it with bay leaves. I thought the bay leaves added a really nice flavor to it. Look how uh, juicy mine is still. So here we go. Oh. And look at that. Really filled up with fruits and nuts. Okay, here we go. This is very, very boozy um, just because the alcohol hasn't dissipated yet I like that but it's gonna be too much for some people oh it smells really good though oh wow I mean of course I like my own pistachios um, which I don't think is in a normal fruitcake I really like that flavor my cherries don't taste so artificial. Medjool dates. Yeah, this is really good. It tastes like a, a, a baked good. It doesn't taste like a, I don't know, an artificial once a year holiday thing. Um, I could enjoy a slice of this with a glass of brandy any night. This is really good. I can see how it's going to get better with age. The texture. Um, just to be fair, there's a little bit of that grittiness that I had in Gethsemane. Not as bad. It's not as off-putting, but it is there. And we'll see if that's still there six months from now. But 
This is a Connolly Bull Rush exclusive. Um, only people who happen to stumble into the restaurant might, might get a piece. Otherwise, I'm going to eat it all because, well, it's good for you. Enjoy. All right, this was my favorite from last year, Frog Hollow. This and Collins Street out of Texas uh, were the two I most enjoyed. Neither is uh, super cheap, but they're both really good, easily available online. Um, I will say that having just eaten my fruit cake, which was so alcoholic, my mouth is burning from alcohol, so that may taint the last couple of, of fruit cakes here. But here we go. This is Frog Hollow. There's that bay leaf that I mentioned in mine. I like the size of this. Um, you know, I don't need a five pound fruit cake. I need something that me and a few guests can enjoy. Um, that's actually what, a citrus peel? Okay, you can see it's artisanal, tied off. Look at that. Love this. Love what they're doing. So yeah, that's a citrus peel. Maybe orange, maybe grapefruit. Their cheesecloth is drier than mine, so maybe maybe I'm dousing mine too much. Whew, here we go. Look at that. Okay. Okay. Yeah, very low fruit, very little nuts. Oh, it smells so good though. That is so delicious. It's like, it's subtle. An infusion of orange peel. Um, not all the candied fruits and nuts. The texture, almost like a brownie maybe, like a cakier brownie. Um, so it's moist, but not wet. It's um, got plenty of stuff in there. I, I haven't looked at the label, but probably dates and figs and stuff like that. In fact, I think I'm tasting figs. It's a beautiful cake. For people who want traditional fruit and nut, monks and nuns, this is not for you. But for people who want this with some, I don't know, aged cheddar or conte cheese, or maybe even brie, classic cognac, this is the way to go at the end of the night. Okay, this is the one I'm most excited about. Clearly the most artisanal. Um, this is how it arrived in a, a postal service priority box. It said aged. I wrote June Taylor just because I didn't know what was inside and I didn't want to forget where I got this from. June Taylor apparently is a regular at farmer's markets in California. I think it was Long Beach, but I don't remember. And a very, very small producer. Um, not cheap. So if you're, if you're like, the one at Walmart's good enough for me, this is not the one for you. But let's go ahead, open it, see what we have inside. It's just wrapped in tissue paper, which is really odd. I mean, that's clearly someone, like a home cook type person trying to be fancy. That's fine. She calls them Christmas cakes. That's a pretty wrapper. Some instructions that I'll read here in a little bit. Maybe history, I don't know. I don't care about that now, I just care about eating it. California, so she had to label it, I'm sure. And this is just, it feels like craft paper. Yeah, I mean, this is beautiful. Talk about a gift. Um, I would much rather get this than uh, one of those tins, although the tins are fun too. Here we are just in saran wrap. So. This will be the slowest unboxing because a human being did this instead of a factory. Here we go. Found the end. No, oh, that's one or two. Which is funny because this is how I would have done it too. Wrapped it twice in saran wrap. With someone who doesn't have commercial equipment. Oh, there we go. Wrapped in cheesecloth. 
the booze is wafting immediately. It smells really, really good. Look at that cheesecloth, the color of it. And there it is. June Taylor out of California. Here we go. So I would say 60-70% loaded. Looks uh, all dark fruit, so probably mostly um, prunes, dates, figs, maybe raisins. Oh, it smells fantastic. The most unique of all the flavors that I've had in this batch. Juicy pieces of fruit versus just dried fruit. It's interesting because this reminds me the most of black cake, although it's not the same at all. Um, definitely getting seeds now from figs. And even though it's similar to a black cake, the flavor's different. This has a, a freshness, a citrusy, the, the fruitiness. So it's like, it's clearly good fresh fruit, not just dried stuff that they got out of who knows what warehouse. Um, so I guess my response to this, this is a quality fruitcake, artisanal. I think it's worth the money, especially if you're gifting it. Um, it's probably not the one I'm going to reorder next year. Of the batch that I just went through, Frog Hollow is still my favorite. Um, this is not, but it, I don't want to knock it because it is a really good fruitcake. It's just not the style that I like. Um, I think I want more nuts in it, and I think I want more, I don't know. The artificial fruit that I've been knocking this whole video, maybe I want more of that in my fruitcake. Okay, so the next one is a late comer. We had two come in uh, after our initial shoot, which is why things will look a little different. This is Abbott's Table. It is a uh, Monks and Nuns fruit cake. This one is from Georgia. And uh, there's a number of things that they highlight as being special about theirs, but uh, the one thing I'll point out is peach brandy as the liquor. So let's see what we have inside. Got some slick packaging. Very traditional looking fruit cake. It's a loaf, not a round. Uh, since we're doing the unboxing, this is a little curious. Looks like one of the monks put their cigarette out in my box. And there we go. Okay. And as I said, this is a, it looks like a very traditional monks and nuns. I'd say about 70% filled, uh, maybe a little less than Gethsemane and Assumption, uh, but looks and smells just like all the others. So I will say one thing, uh, you can hear the enthusiasm in my voice for yet another fruitcake. This is number seven. Um, the, it's clear this was made by human beings, not a machine, uh, just by the shape of the loaf. It has the where the batter's gone up the side, and, and I didn't see that on all of them. But here we go. So the fact that it broke on me tells me how dry this is. Uh, <laughs> wow, I'm really building this up to be a great fruit cake. This came highly recommended from a friend. That friend knows who she is. And I think she's moving down on my list of trusted sources. This is really dry. It's really dry. Um, that peach brandy is kind of lost. If you're going to go with the monks and nuns um, and you enjoy Georgia and peaches, even though I don't taste them, this is probably the way to go. Um, otherwise, we may have some other options for you, but if you want to support the monks from Georgia, this is the fruitcake for you.
So, I don't know why a date lady is in Springfield, Missouri, um, instead of California. That's where I would have expected it from. But uh, here we go, date lady fruitcake. I think the most simple of the packaging, even though it had the fanciest of the boxes. So she's kind of redeemed herself in my artisanal eye, but let's see. It doesn't have a boozy taste or a boozy smell at all, which is disappointing, but maybe good because I do like my boozy fruitcakes. Ooh. Oh. I said it was dense. It is dense. This may be my favorite texture of all the cakes we've eaten today. And this is number eight on the list. It was a latecomer. I almost said, eh, I'm not going to do it. It's too fancy and it's not even a real fruit cake. It's a date cake. I really like this. It's like a, it's like a really well done brownie. Um, Okay. It's not, it, I can't let it win in the traditional fruitcake category because, well, it's not. It's, it's definitely more like, um, I've said before in this video, I like Trinidadian black cakes or Caribbean black cakes. That's my favorite of all. Um, and those don't have as much fruit so much as cake, and it's really dense. And I think this falls into that category. It's a really good cake. Um, and it's unique from everything else I've eaten today definitely would suggest this and and since most of my viewers are going to be from Missouri um, shoot get it it's it's from Springfield definitely worth the purchase well as promised a change of heart after a few days of thought and processing mostly uh, which ones did I go back for seconds and thirds on? June Taylor won my heart. Her ingredients, her process are just spectacular. It's a phenomenal cake. It is an astronomical price, but you can't go wrong if you're able to get it. Uh, I, one more plug, if anyone wants to make a quick donation to this project, we would appreciate it through Venmo or PayPal. Thanks again for watching.